pass. I just felt faith alive at that moment when I looked at you. This thing that you're going through right now, you're going to get through it. He's going to get through it. Now listen, he's going to give you your voice. He's going to give you your voice back. Listen to me. He's going to give you your voice back. You all remember when I had this stroke? Three days, you know, Jesus was in the grave. Well, three days I came out of the stroke. The doctors kept telling me I was lucky. I said, don't use that word, please. They don't use it in heaven. I said, I had a miracle. And God is doing something in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in your ministry right now. And it's the time, how many know there's a time for everything? The Bible tells us that. There's a time for it. There was a faith that was moving this morning like the riders in the sky. Yes, Lord, Lord, yes, Lord. Whenever you have a vision of the door opening, a door opening, it means God wants a prophetic word. It took me a little while to learn that. When you see a vision of a door opening, it means God wants to speak. Now, I didn't see it this morning, but I've seen it twice recently and while we were singing. Amen. Because our worship pleased him. Yes. And not often does God tell you that your worship pleases Him. If you've ever noticed, God doesn't give out a lot of accolades. He doesn't run around patting you on the back and telling you you're doing good. He always wants more. And you see the rewards by our obedience. That's how you know God is by obeying Him. In the little things and then the bigger things come. We're not hearing enough voices in the church. The voice of the Spirit. Because it gives direction. It turns things around. It'll make you do things that you never considered. Nor thought of. Or nor wanted to do. But it brings a liberty in the Spirit. God's wanting liberty. How many know what I'm talking about? The freedom in the Spirit. He wants to come down. And I felt, how many felt the wheel in the middle of the wheel? It's like it's like these old clocks you used to you wind up, you know, they had the gears in them. One, one's going one way and one's going the other. That's the movement of that watch. It's a movement of timing. And that's how God is. His movements come in the earth as we move into the rhythms of agreement, of appreciation. So that particular, I mean, is that something God gave you? That's something God gave you. We've heard it before, but we always know it's timely. Because there's rhythms on it. Not every song has rhythms on it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I got this new car, and everybody's telling me how, I mean, it's not brand new, but it's new to me. And everybody keeps telling me that, well, that's a nice car. I said, how do you know you ever driven one? I mean, it drives different. I don't want to go into the sequence of it, but it just drives different. And then I heard somebody say something about a turbo engine. Turbo engine. Do I want this turbo engine? Well, God wants you to know there's a difference in what's happening in the earth that's actually getting happening. And I woke up this morning and I, I had this awesome feeling fear, respect, honor to the Lord. I mean, I just took my breath away. I'm like, we're right on the edge. It could be the coming of the Lord. It could be a movement in the earth. But I prayed before I left. I took time to put everything down, even being late, to pray some more. I just walked through my house and prayed, God, do something this morning that will open the hearts of the people to receive. And God wants us to hear the sounds of his glory. There's movement in different sounds. It's not just one sound, but there's different sounds. I was thinking as we were, the three of us were leading the singing, we had a different sound on our voice. God has billions of anointings. Nobody has the same anointing. Is that what? Nobody has the same anointing, the same look. The same, and God knows all the DNAs. Hallelujah. Everybody. He knows everything. The color of your eyes, the smell of your breath. We had a man prophesy over a lady one day. And the, 
we almost fainted. We felt like laughing. The Lord said, I know you by the smell of your breath. I thought I never read that in the Bible. But you know, God was wakening the people. God wants to wake up our hearts. Wake us up. Jolt us. He said he's going to come speaking like thunder and lightning. That was a prophetic word. You know what people do when they start thundering and lightning? They run in the house. They run for shelter. They run to hide somewhere. God's wanting us to know he's loud. <laughs> Just listen to the thunder. I used to know a lady and she'd get up every day to go outside and see what the clouds look like. She was, go she was concerned about a storm coming every day. Well, rain comes out of the storm. Rain that makes things grow and refreshes. There was a word last week. A lot of people think it's a storm, but no, it's a rain coming. The latter rain is coming. And we've got to act like it, look like it. You know what happens when people look like they've been in a storm? You ever seen anybody in a storm? <laughs> Nothing is in place. Everything seems to be out of order, the order of God. God wants to bring his order. Ooh, I feel that. But I want to say something to you. God's going to close doors that have been opened, and open doors that's been closed. You've got to listen to this. This is a key to this last day movement. The door I'm speaking about is the way we worship, mm -hmm. the way we applaud God, the way we know God. Because most of the church is just in ankle deep water. Yes. You know, you can kind of walk in it. You can't run too much if you walk in it. But I don't like walking. Hallelujah. I like flowing. Or better yet, being carried. We were carried away for a couple of moments there. How many felt those moments of eternity? We didn't want that moment to end. Hallelujah. But when it's to the ankles and to the knees, it won't birth. It's got to get to the loins. That's where the birthing is. So we got to come into another measure. The Bible says he's without measure. Ezekiel began to measure it. He said to the ankles, to the knees, to the loins, to the hips, to the shoulders, over his head, is being carried. Yeah. You know, when it's over your head, you can't see what's going on in the natural. God wants to see into the, God wants us to see into the, see into the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that everything gets saved. Everything gets saved from itself. There's no more of, of the world or the natural or the earthly, but it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yes. Living, breathing, moving, speaking, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Glory to God. And I, I took a couple of prophecies from this room and showed it to some people and I, I knew they didn't read it all. They just kind of glanced over and I said, read it all. Amen. If you're going to feed me, honey, start with the appetizer. <laughs> the sugar is nice for a little while, but it mm -hmm. makes you feel sluggish after a while. But you know that commercial, we got the meat. How many know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep, yep. Jesus said to those disciples when he came, hey, you got any meat over there? Hallelujah. He didn't ask them if they had any bread. He said, have you got any meat? Hallelujah. Got something that will strengthen you. So God wants to birth a new song and a new way of worship. So he's going to close that old way of worship out. This is what I'm talking to you about. And he's going to bring the new way of worship in. And sometimes we're not, we know what it is, but we got to be like Peter and get out of the boat. Step on the waters. He said the knowledge of it will be like the waters that covers the sea. A depth of measure. You know, I'll go out in the water as far as I feel safe because I can't swim. But I did learn to float on my back. You just get still. And you can float on your back, but I, don't throw me out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Get out of the boat. Get out of the way of doing it. Thinking. Moving in it. And every day have an experience with God. 
that you'll know more than just his hand. I used to see the Lord a lot, his hand moving and his sleeve to his gown, and I didn't see any more. I wanted to get past the shoulders. Because when you see his face is when you're changed. The hand is just giving, but the face is changing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you this quick story. I want something every day with the Lord that I can just sit there and laugh until I cry. Yeah. Because he said, my ways are past finding out. How many know what I'm saying? Amen. Fourth of July, I was all ready for it. But once in my life, I had my banner hanging outside. My house was in order. I had food in there. I wasn't planning to go anywhere. I'd have hot dogs by myself. <laughs> And I decided to pray the night before, and I got in my chair, and I was praying. And I must have prayed myself to sleep because I woke up at 4.30. I'm still in the chair. I thought, well, I'm not going to bed now. So I talked to the little, little Lord, went into my bedroom, and I have a little settee at the end of my bed. And I sat there, and I talked to him some more. And I have little night lights around my house. And all of a sudden, everything went out. I thought, oh. The electricity went out. But three days before, a friend had called me and she said, I want to tell you about a dream I had. <laughs> now, listen to people's dreams because you might be the person in a dream. They're led by the Spirit. She said she saw all the electricity go out and refrigerators everywhere had rotten food in it. People were trying to clean it out. So she's up in Idaho. Ramona, so I called her back. I said... Whose refrigerator was it? She said, well, I don't know. There was a number of them. But it bothered me. You know what I'm saying? When God speaks, it'll bother you. You know it's for you. So I thought about it. I thought about it. Now, this is what I said just before the lights went out. I don't know where this thought came from, but God has a sense of humor. And I thought, I wonder if I paid my electric bill this month. What does it do? I didn't, you know, they change it around a couple of days here and now. I think I'll go find out. Now, that was my last thought, and then in one second, the lights went out. I said, oh, the lights went out. Well, I wasn't upset, so I'm thinking, now, what am I going to do? I'm going to call the electric company. It's the 4th of July. Am I going to have three days of silence here? So I sit there and thought about it for a minute. And then I found my phone only had two minutes of time on it. You can't even call them in two minutes. So I thought, what am I going to do? And I heard this song. And it thought, I thought about Paul and Silas. They were in jail, but they were determined to go down to Philippi and preach the gospel. But they were in jail. And I heard this song. I began to sing it at the top of my lungs. I'm trying to remember where it was. I wrote it on a piece of paper somewhere. And I began to sing it out, but it was about give the Lord the praise. I think I got it here on a piece of paper. I don't want to lose this moment in history. Hallelujah. I began to sing this song. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord at the top of my lungs. And I heard a beep on my phone and I picked it up and it was from APS and it says, we know your electricity is out. Now it was on the R block because I'm in Peoria and the other people in Glendale, so I go out to see who the lights are on, you know. This all happened in a few minutes. And it says, we know your lights are out and we're going to turn them back on by 9 o'clock. Well, that's four hours. But the Lord hadn't spoken that song, we bring the sacrifice to praise him again. I mean, time was just galloping. And I heard that song and I began to belt it out. And I want to tell you, my electricity came back on. They said four hours, and it came back on in 30 minutes. You know what it was about? It was the sacrifice of praise. You remember David began to sing. They sent the singers and the dancers before the warriors to bring the victory in. And this morning, we declared victory in the heavens. How many felt it? There's something that has opened up. We may hear it in the news. We may hear it from a friend. But something opened up in the heavens. Now they're beginning to, they're going to, Wells Fargo is going to change your banking system if you have an account with them by the 26th of this month. They already sent me a new card in the mail. 
And with a note, you can keep this if you like. If you don't want to, you can call this back up. Everything's going to change because God's getting to move in His way. I had a hallelujah time in my kitchen. You know, I'm trying to decide, should I go down to McDonald's and hook up my phone? No, God doesn't want you doing that. He's got a better plan. He has a better way of working to save you time. We don't have time. I'm thinking about going down, you know, and hooking up my phone and having some coffee because the electricity is on there. But God does not want us running around trying to figure out a plan. He's already got one. Amen. You've been sending up your praises, and he's been working in it to bring you the answers of what he wants to do in your life in everything. So you all know that we got a call that, I'm telling you, God works while we're sleeping. He says, while you're sleeping, he never sleeps. We talked about our tour to Israel, and they want to do something on September the 1st. And I said, Lord, I know some of the people don't even have the passport yet. I'm not going to call you out. I told you six weeks ago, get your passport. And we couldn't possibly get it together. All the rooms were filled up. Somebody had a dream that I took a tour there and all the rooms were filled up. It's their 75th anniversary, so people from all over the world are going to Israel. And so I said, God, I really thought you wanted us to go in the latter part of October. So yesterday I had an appointment, and I'm having lunch with someone, dinner with someone. It's 10 hours difference in the time. They're all in bed. Well, never mind. Text them anyway. <laughs> so we did, and they answered. Would they be willing to give us the tour of the latter part of October? And they said yes. Wow, Come on. God works quickly, swiftly. I'm thinking about it in my house. Remember, the Bible says, I'll sing over you with songs of deliverance. Yes. Yes. Any of your songs. Yes. Now, you need to write them down because they have something to do with your schedules, your appointments, and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I heard this song when I was thinking September the 1st, and I heard this song, Nothing is impossible with me. I thought, oh, God is going to change it for me. I didn't know how he was going to do it. I didn't talk to my friend. She said, they're going to do the land and somebody else is going to do the air. I thought, you don't want to do that. I said, I'm telling you, that could be trouble. you got to know all these things in the spirit. Yeah. God doesn't want us peace feeling things. He has a higher plan. I mean, you found that out. Yeah. He has a better way. Yeah. Better way. With butter. Yeah. I like it seasoned with butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Amen. When you think about these things, it reminds you of another miracle he gave you. Another time. I wanted some money one day, but I didn't want to pay $5 a pound for it. And I'm walking through the store, and I kid you not, this man comes up to me with his cart with a pound of butter, and he said, Here, Merry Christmas. Wow. Wow. Really? You remember with a laugh, cry, shout? But you know it's God. How many know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. I mean, God wants you to enjoy your experience with Him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're laughing and you don't even you know. <laughs> you're birthing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're birthing in the Spirit. Yeah. Therefore, with joy shall you go out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. With joy. He said, all the trees of the field will clap their hands. I just didn't understand it, so I went out to see where the trees were. I'm serious. I used to do crazy things, but I got a good laugh out of a lot of it. And God wants you to enjoy your relationship. Yeah. So God is closing the door to the old way of worship. Yep, yep. Come on. But he's got some people that has got to be strange enough to do it differently. Thank you, Lord. Well, put it up high. And he's looking for people that know they're not the brightest star in the sky or the sharpest guy in, in the drawer. Amen. Good, I can do something with you. Hallelujah. You don't know anything, and I have everything that you need. And let's do it my way. Hallelujah. Amen. His way is the highway. Yeah. Oh, the highways of God. The glory he's going to bring. Now, listen, God is going to cause some people to see where they have not been seen. Discernment. You're going to discern the times.
Amen. Every moment is going to be an awakening moment in the plan of God. It's not going to be wasted time. Amen. Yesterday, I don't even want to tell you how busy I was. I used to just want one appointment a day. The Lord said, oh, no. I've redeemed too much time for you. And let him tell you, he knows what he's put in you, so he knows what he can do with you. Yeah. See, a lot of people don't think God knows what he's doing. Oh. Wow, well, you've been going through storms. He's been bringing the rain. I love yeah. what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see the, the biggest set of angel wings on your back. I just saw it, yes. Both of you, right here, I just saw it. Beautiful wings. There's going to be a, a lifting, hallelujah. There will be a visitations of the heavenly nature coming up on both of you. Be sure you have pad and pencil in every room of the house. So you can write it down. Glory to God got to be determined today. doesn't matter what the weather looks like, what you hear. We had a word last week, and I didn't hear it all, but I want to read you some of the key points. The heavens are always open, but you have to have keys. The Word of God says, do not despise prophecy. Amen. More is said on prophecy than any other gift, because it's the testimony of Jesus. Amen. The spirit of the prophetic was in this room today as we were singing. We didn't want that moment to end. Now, I don't know about you, but I felt a lot of fire in the past six months. Anybody else felt a lot of fire? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just seems like nothing wants to go right. It's because God's bringing a new order in everything. In everything. He said he's going to take the coals off the altar and he's going to fan the fires. That was the word last week. Wow. And he said, you shall feel the bellows as it comes over you. I'm going to put a fire in you that no man can put out. Amen. Let me just say this. As we were in those high places worshiping, I saw the Lord of hosts as he was getting ready to mount his horse. And he had on these black boots that came up to his knees. And they were the kind that horsemen wear. They had buckles right at the top. And I saw him adjust the buckles on the boots. So I knew he was getting ready to ride. Hallelujah. Now we're going to hear probably a lot of catastrophes, shakings, turmoil, France, right? I mean, I remember the word we had about France six months ago. I kept seeing... The floor to the I said, God's doing something in France. Yeah. It was just a little awakening in the news. And now that fire that has started in France has run over into Switzerland and other countries wow. that is around there. Wow. And what it is all about is that I think and a policeman shot a young man, but it goes along with the word of God that innocently he was killed. But it goes along with the word where they're going to call evil good and good evil. That's every, how many of you know? That's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere you yeah. go. Yeah. I told the man at the insurance company when I got on my car recently, I said, so you've gone to the left too? He said, what? Yeah. <laughs> I said, why are you charging me all this money? Haven't I been a good person? <laughs> Haven't I been a good driver? Well, you know, I said, no, I don't know. Tell me. About it. <laughs> you got to take a stand. Stop letting people yes. run over top of you. Yes. And I want to know what right do you have to ask for five times what I've been paying here? Yeah. Where are your rights? Yeah. My rights is it's not respectful, it's not legal, it's not honest. Man, that's right. You couldn't say anything. Good for you. Now go yeah. back and talk to your boss and give me a better number. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And because I did that, I got two letters from two other insurance companies telling me that their rates were better than my company. This is what God did for me. They said, call me up and we'll help you out. All right. He said, I'm going to come in the empty places that you will open up to me. Can anybody say, ouch or oh, mayor? Come on, I can hear anybody put their hands up and volunteer. I got some places that need to open up to God. Yes. We used to prophesy over people in our ministry. We, our pastor would say, open up. <laughs> open up. 
How many have ever had tried to have a conversation with people and you just weren't on the same page? Right. It's okay. because they were not the same place you were, where you're not where were they were spiritually. So you couldn't come to an agreement. So God wants to get into some places that haven't been open to him. And he said, you shall feel the comfort of who I am and the glory of who I am to be in your life. These are rich words. This is the riches of his glory I'm talking to you about. Hallelujah. He said, for even those who do not know me, I will show you that I am God. Nothing is difficult, hard, and nothing is too late. He showed me that yesterday. With changing that tour, they just don't do that for you. But God can change the heart of a man in a moment. Hallelujah. And I shall work a work that it will be difficult for some of you to announce or even declare it. Trying to explain it. If I should ask each one of you individually, what did you feel God was doing while we were worshiping the Lord? Now, not to put you on the spot, but what was God doing? Yeah. Woo! I mean, there's a new vocabulary that's coming. Amen. You know, too often we brought the sermons and the glory down to man's thinking, and it hasn't completed the work God's wanted to do in the lives of people's yeah. spirits. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we use the terms of the earth. The, you know the slogans of the earthly mm. when he's the king you approach him differently you speak of him differently yes. the ways that I work the quickness that I shall move the swiftness that I shall take the nation saith the Lord Hallelujah. pull not back but pull yeah. close see there's realms God wants to show us but we've got to gather closer unto him it means a lot of times we don't have time for other things. When Esther was being made the queen, she had six months. Tells you in the Bible of myrrh and frankincense and other perfumes. And six months of other things that they would not talk about. Anybody hearing that other six months? I am. But I've learned, I've finally learned after all my 85 years not to complain now. What are you doing? Don't ask the Lord what he's doing. Or he'll do more. <laughs> what he's doing in us is for eternity. Yes, yes. Forever. Yes. Forever. It, you know, it's wonderful to... All the teachings on your destiny. You can do this and you do that. Well, is that going to be regarded in heaven when we get there? Where you did this and you... Only what's done for Christ is going to last. Sorry. How many know that? Mm -hmm. Only what's going to be Amen. about Jesus. This is a, a wonderful prophecy. Yeah. He said, I'm going to work. It's going to be difficult for you to announce it. Now, keep your head on when you hear what others are saying. Don't lose your head over what they're saying. That's right. Amen. Right there. Yeah. Pull not back, but pull close to me. I want to pour anointings. I like the S on this. Glory, on you. Glory, glory. I'm going to give you a head start. How many want a head start? If you're a little slow, we need it. <laughs> that you shall know the ways I'm working. I shall blaze a trail for you to walk in. That nothing shall hinder your steps. Well, some of you should be shouting. Nor and nothing shall stop you. Either the wind shall blow. The winds of my presence and winds of change. Some will think it's a storm. But many will know this bringing the rain, the rain, the water, the rain shall bring the harvest, the rain shall refresh. I shall reveal myself in ways that will startle you, but will awaken you, yes. saith the Lord. Woo, come on, put your hands on the bench for me. Anybody said to the Lord, you can't hear? Be honest. Anybody said to the Lord, Lord, I can't hear? Well, maybe he's not saying anything right now. But I'm going to awaken many because I want you to know I had chosen you. You did not choose me. That's right. I've called you from the ends of the earth. Will you be my bride? Every one of you should have put your hands up and said, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. That's me, that's me, that's me. That's me, that's me. He said, I'm going to say things to you, lovely things, and you will wonder who's talking to you. Hallelujah. You'll wonder, does God talk like that? <laughs> 
Yes. He'll talk any way that'll make you hear. Make me understand. He'll work a way that we'll understand. He said, I'll even ask you if you'll be my Valentine. I'm telling you what is on my heart. I love you with an everlasting love, with a consuming love. And I shall tell you these hidden things. Many times you'll wonder, is there another breath? But I will fill you with my presence so that you can go on. There should be a rest in your spirit to do these things I've called you to do. You won't be sleepy, tired, or lackadaisical, but you shall have direction. Oh, come on. How many want that? Hallelujah. She'll have direction. It means we won't waste time. Amen. To move into the paths of righteousness for my name's sake. For I've called you by my name and I want you to declare it everywhere. Declare it who I am and what I'm doing and many <laughs> shall run into the kingdom, Amen. saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? Yeah. I told you the story about the lady that wanted to get married. So she got in the telephone directory, find, tried to find a church, came to our ministry, and she'd never been to that kind of service before. <laughs> she came to me in between sessions. She was all dressed up in this ivory lace dress. And she'd come with her boyfriend. He was sitting in the back. She'd come to get married. So she called us, and Ruth told her to come on. But that morning, listen, that morning, for an hour and a half, we sang in our worship service, let me call you sweetheart, I'm in love with you. <laughs> and no one knew it. We were wow. so caught up in the spirit. Wow. My musician looked at me and she said, I hear a song, Sister Ruth. I said, play it. She said, it was kind of worldly. I said, play it anyway. When you hear from the spirit, play it. So we began to sing, let me call you sweetheart. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. People don't do this in church. Oh, but Jesus does. And we had these drop clubs. They were actually tablecloths. We had them at a sale in a hotel. And we were waving them all around our head, running all around the service. And after the worship service, I said, Lord, what in the world was that all about? <laughs> And that night, here's this girl. I put the numbers together. She wanted to get married. We were preparing the way. Amen. So she comes over, and I'm watching her. She's watching Sister Ruth preach, and she's enamored like this. She comes and stands for one hour by Sister Ruth like this. Nobody told her to sit down. It didn't disturb anybody. God was moving. And Ruth just kind of whispered like this, said, she's come to get married. Oh, <laughs> let God be God. So she's watching Ruth all this time. She comes to me after the marriage and she said, who are you people? <laughs> really? I said, where'd you find us? She said, in the telephone directory. I said, why'd you call us? Well, I wanted to get married, but my boyfriend, they'd been cohabitating together. She wanted to be an honorable woman. And he did not want to get married. And he made it obvious to everybody in that room. It was like this. Do the whole service. Make me if you can. And the glory came. Yeah. By the time he got to the altar, he was sobbing all over. Yeah, Lord. I cannot describe to you how he looked. It was running out of his nose. He had his head like this, shaking his head. That foot that was like this came back like this, and he's all honorable and humble before the Lord. Wow. And Sister Ruth is telling him what love is all about. And I thought, oh, that's why we were singing Let Me Call You. I said, we're a church, honey. She said, I feel like I've known you all my life. In a moment, God brought truth to her heart. In a moment. She said, I feel like I've known you people all my life. You want to have these kind of experiences with God, not just 
Oh, well, we sang three songs and took an offering this morning. And I don't remember what the preacher preached on. Come on, let the door be open. Yeah. Let God make some announcements. Yeah. Yeah. Let God declare something in your heart. Let there be a prophetic word like a yeah. prophet come out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Every one of you got the spirit of truth in you. Yeah. And God yeah. is speaking all the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. And let him awaken your heart to love and adore him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to declare some coming events. Amen. Some things that are about to happen. Amen. I've never been to a wedding like that before. I mean, he's crying and snorting and carrying on. And she's in this beautiful dress that I wished I had. I mean, and we'd thrown drop bars all over the room that day singing, Let Me Call You a Sweetheart. And I thought, Lord, I don't know what you want to get from us, but I hope we gave it to you today. Amen. God says, prepare the way. This is the way. John the Baptist came and they didn't understand who he was. He wasn't really... The theme of his gospel was not all about baptism and repentance. He had already had a vision that he saw a dove over someone and he was trying to find that person. And it was Jesus. Anybody listening to what I'm saying? God will give you a vision that will seem strange, out of order. Where did this come from? God, what does this have to do with spirituality? Where does it fit in? You might see a sword and you might say, you're going to kill me, Lord. Maybe he's got a hammer. No, he's going to put the nail in in the short place. Just see something. Say, God, I want to see something. I don't care where it is, but give me yes. something that my eyes shall be open. Yes. And my heart can take in. Amen. I read about the seven churches, and one of me said, you're miserable and poor and wretched and blind and naked. Did you know that's what he said to the loud to see in church? Apostasy, church of apostasy. They were saying, I'm rich and we have need of nothing and everything is okay. And God will just leave us okay if we don't want change. When it gets too comfortable, that's the time where you need to say, Lord, I need to change. Yes. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's because, listen, anytime God is working and moving, honey, there's going to be shakings. Hardly ever does it come smoothly. Anybody ever had surgery without pain? If you have, put your hand up. When you, God begins to cut into our lives, the pattern and the blueprint of what he wants. I was thinking yesterday, all the people that I've ministered with, God has taken them away one by one as I went down the road of life. He gave them to me just, just when I... We were trained to work well together. It was time for them to go someplace else. And I'd have to start all over again. Sometimes, you know, that wear, I mean, it just keeps wearing, wearing, until you're wearing Christ, the hope of glory. So come into the new worship. Tell the Lord you want to worship in a new way. You want to know him in a new way. You want to declare him in a new way. You want to know the wonder of his name. The wonder. I have a Terry McCallum CD in my car. He's a great worshiper. His tapes still have a great anointing. And I started to sing in this morning coming. Wonderful counselor, mighty God. Father, Prince of Peace, the great I am, we glorify the Lamb. Wonderful Counselor, mighty God, Father, Prince of the great I am, we glorify the land. And by the time I sang it through one time, I almost had to pull the car over. I couldn't see for the tears. It pierced my heart. 
God wonderful counselor, mighty God, Father, Prince of Peace, the great I am, we glory.
yesterday and she said I called you because I had a dream in the night and she said sister Ruth Ethelin come to visit me now I have proof on this in the Bible because Moses and Elijah visited the Lord just before he 
went to the cross. Yeah. They actually visited him to tell him what was about to happen in his life. And not much is said in the Bible about it. I don't know if it's recorded twice or not. I know it's recorded once. It's where Peter wanted to build three tabernacles. Right. And anyway, Moses and Elijah was there to minister unto the Lord Jesus. And we're not making doctrines, and I'm not trying to convince you of anything, and I really don't care whether anybody believes it or not. You can't make it up, and the devil is certainly not going to tell you these things. I'll tell you. He's not going to tell you anything that's going to bless you. So she said, I want to tell you that Ruth Huffman came to visit me last night. I said, well, what was she doing? She said, well, she spoke to me. There was no two-way conversation, but she said, I didn't know what she was saying, so she came back the second time. <laughs> and she was thanking her for being a friend to me. Wow. Now, that won't mean anything to you, but I know what it meant to me. <laughs> she was thanking her because Ruth came to visit me one night, and she said, there were things I wanted to tell you, and I didn't get to tell you. And she talked with her hands like a Jew. She said, a Jew, no. Because she lived in Israel 28 years. Had 13 houses there, which was a great miracle. I don't know of any other ministry that had that. By faith. She had 13 houses. One in Tiberias, and one in Switzerland, one in France, and one in England, one in New York, and one in the new frontiers of Hong Kong. And of course we had the big ministry at Ashland, Virginia. So another lady called me from Mexico. Are you Ruth Carneal? I said, yes, I am. Do you know a Ruth Heflin? I said, well, I did. She's passed. Well, she came to visit me. <laughs> and she told me I had an inheritance, this is recently, in Israel. I said, are you Jewish? She said, yes. I said, do you know what she was saying to you? She said, well, not really. That's why I'm calling you. I said, have you been to Israel? She said, no. I said, well, you need to do whatever you have to do to get there. Don't wait for a tour. Find a friend that knows how to travel the same way you do. Backpack and get you to stay in some hostels and just take a tour of Israel. Amen. Eat off the streets. Listen, if you really want to do it, you'll do it. Any way you can do it. Because it's the legacy of the Lord on your life. Amen. Now, why am I telling you this? Because <laughs> Jesus said he is going to do great and notable things. Notable means it's going to be sounded in a lot of places. Hallelujah. It speaks about this in the book of Acts. Notable miracles. Yes. Signs, yes. miracles, yes. and wonders. Amen. Now, I'm hearing people say they don't know about the goal. It's never happened to them. But they said, why would Jesus have to make a spectral, spectacle of himself to prove who he is? He doesn't have to. He's just who he is, and he can do whatever he wants to do. We've got to have eyes to see it. Amen. So he talks about signs and wonders and miracles. I don't want to have enough money to take care of me that I won't have to depend upon the Lord. Amen. That means he won't be in the picture. Amen. You always want him right there. Amen. So there, there are going to be people, I had a friend to call me, I'm going to announce this because I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm not afraid of it. And I'm waiting for anybody that you've heard from God and you're kind of afraid to tell other people because it seems a little over the wire. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Because he says man hasn't uttered it, nor heard of it, nor thought of it, or is speaking of it. He just said in this prophecy, you won't be able to declare or announce it or define it because you won't know how to do it. Amen. It's going to be beyond what you have read or been taught by any preacher. Because they have not experienced it yet. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There are a few people that's had, like Catherine Coleman, Ruth Heflin, an unusual visitations from the Lord. I've never met anybody 
She even had a look in her eyes that looked like eternity. She had a faraway look. She never looked like she was here. She was there. And I'm feeling that more myself recently. Earth is not my home. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's nothing I want to see, nothing that works me. Nothing I want to buy. I don't even like to go shopping. It's like a burden. But there are a few people that have had an experience with God. Everybody's had some experience because you've gotten saved. But to know him, you have to get close to him because his ways are hidden. They're hidden in the glory. And it's a realm, it's in the third heavens. It's not in the second or first heavens. So we have to come up higher. John said he heard a great voice in the book of Revelation, come up higher. Yes. And he described him from the hair on his head to the heels of his feet in great form. Yes. The Shemanite woman described him in the Song of Solomon almost in the same measure because she had a personal, real, it's, it's not talking about Solomon and all his wives. He's talking about the bride and the bridegroom. But they used Solomon to write it. I hope he was saved. I'm very serious. Amen. You read it carefully what they had to say about Solomon. Yeah. It says that God was upset with him because he took on heathen wives and he conformed to their religion. The tree of good and evil, when it says, do not eat of the tree of good and evil, he's talking about don't be in a church that's only half Amen. That's what that means. Half truths. They got a little good in them, but they got a lot that's not good. Right. It doesn't pass the barcode. <laughs> Do you want people Amen. that know he said those that know their God Amen. shall do great exploits. Yes. Great things. Hallelujah. I can tell you that Ruth Heflin never traveled with money nor a credit card. Because she never had it. She believed God. And I've been with her where I thought I would have a heart attack. I'm, still, I'm telling you, I would feel faint when I would see the steps of faith that she would take with no money. And no one ever knew it. But because she had prepared herself before the Lord, God prepared ahead of her. Amen. It's the preparation that you move into what God's getting ready Amen. to move you into. Now listen, this is very important. I would never go on a trip anywhere without preparing first. Are you going to have dead works? Yeah. Yes. It's not going to be anything coming to life. It'll be the same old, same old. People won't be awakened. There won't be miracles. There won't be signs and wonders. But it's spending time to know the Father's heart. Amen. That's why Jesus went away every night. It doesn't really say he had a place to go and stay other than Mary in Martha's house once in a while. It's seeking the face of Jesus. He says, seek my face. In other words, seek my highest. Speak my holiness. But Ruth has visited, I know of six people, and she's visited me five times. The last time she visited me, and I shared this with a lot of you, she said, this is probably the last time. Now, there was no conversation between us. She's just telling me things. She said, this is probably the last time you, I will visit you. But most of the times when I see her, she's demonstrating something in the spirit realm that goes with the times that are taking place right now. Mm -hmm. And the, next to the last time I saw her, she came, I heard her coming down the road in a tank. <laughs> I heard metal scraping the ground. I didn't know what it was. And I looked and I saw the world. The Bible tells us the field is the world. In the book of Matthew 24. And all I could hear was a sound. And I saw 10 parking places. And remember I kept talking to you about 10 was testing. I didn't know where I was going. But God was leading me in to other revelation through it. Number 10 in the Bible is a number of testing. He says in the book of Revelation to one of the churches. You will be in prison 10 days. 10 virgins. 10 commandments. Ten pieces of gold on the woman that lost one. 
Jacob's wages were changed 10 times. 10 plagues out of Egypt. It goes on and on and on. Rebecca watered 10 camels. Yeah. But 10 is the number. 10% of your money belongs to the Lord. Boy, that's the hard one. So I heard this noise and I thought, what is that noise? It sounds like somebody's car is all broken down. And I looked, I had to look hard in the dream and I saw this tank coming down the road. It was old, scraping the ground as it came. I mean, it was, it'd been in many battles. And there were 10 parking places and she parked on the one, it was the feathers to my right. And I thought there would be other ministers who would come and park in the other nine places, but they didn't. Until I saw Pastor Maiden. And Pastor Maiden parked in the one that was the feathers to your right. Would be to my left. And it was like he was going to take over her ministry prophetically. Wow. And she pulled into the the slot that was there, the parking place. And she said, this is probably the last time I will visit you. Mm -hmm. And she started to speak to me the things that she wanted to do, but the reason why she couldn't do them. And, and I got on the telephone the next morning and checked out the word she gave me. It was exactly what she told me in the dream. Well, then I saw Pastor Maiden, and he was driving a white Hemi Dodge. A lot of you might not know what a Hemi Dodge is, but it's about the fastest thing on the road. They won't let anybody pass them. They just, they just got a motor in it. And he was driving that white Dodge, and he parked in that last space. But over to his right was his prayer life. And his prayer life was bigger than the harvest. That's how I saw it. That he had prayed that much. And I had a vision of him later. I went and told him about it on my birthday, actually. It was your wife, Lori, that went and told him. She said, you should hear the dream Sister Ruth had about you. That's how it got to him. <laughs> well, I didn't, wasn't going to tell him. I just thought it was an awesome dream. So he, I told him the dream, and Pastor Maiden cried. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants to put the glory on his people. It's, it's going to come a great brokenness. Brother Rob Winter says the Lord gave him the three H's. It's hunger. I'm sorry, humility first. It's brokenness. You're, you're broken and you think you can't be broken anymore. What else? So it's hunger. I'm sorry, humility, hunger, and holiness. Those are the three H's. You cannot have glory without holiness. Now you can have little touches of it here and there. But to live in it and walk in it and have a lifestyle of the glory is going to require total surrender. Yes. Nothing is your own. Nothing. <clears throat> just nothing. I mean, you just feel like you're nothing. You don't know anything. And you really don't until we get in the spirit, he brings it alive. It's just knowledge that he brings it alive. The manifestation of who he is comes alive. Amen. And when it comes alive in your heart, there's an awakening in everything. I don't care what you're doing. Women, if you're cooking, you're, the glory comes on your food when you're cooking it, on your washing, on your cleaning. It's like an anointing comes, but it's different from what you've experienced. So you probably, some of you that are really hungry for God and are seeking and searching and you're really on a pursuit of God are going to have some unusual visitations. We had a girl that came to my house. I have this girl and she wanted to help me. Well, what, what you want to do and what I want to do might be different when you feel like God wants you to do something for me. I said, do you know how to clean house? She said, she didn't answer me. I said, do you have a house? I said, you know how to clean it? You know what cleaning is? So she got on the internet. 
Now, I'm not a person that requires a lot, but I come from a neat house. I like things in order. So, I take her out to eat as a gesture of kindness. And all of a sudden, she starts talking about the visitation from the living creature she had. I said, what did you say? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to take her home in five minutes. We were there seven hours. Uh, Tell me again, what did you see? Because I don't even know this many people that have ever seen living creatures. She said, I went outside to pray because... The boys were making too much noise. They were about 16 or 17. And she said, all of a sudden, I heard a voice and it said, look up. And she said, I looked up and she said, there's these wings with all of these eyes in them. And they're looking at me. Whoa. I said, how tall was this creature? Oh, it was bigger than the light post out beside your house. It's 30 feet high. How high was this living creature in the air? Oh, I feel his presence. She said, about 30 feet above me. She said, so I ran in the house to get a flashlight. And I told my children there was something out in my yard. They said, mother, you better not go out there. It might kill you. Well, of course, the living creature left when she came back out with the flashlight. Honey, I just stayed right there until it took me out with it. I mean, but I don't know how powerful it was. I don't, I've had the presence of the Lord to come up on me and I didn't want to open my eyes. It scared me in my house. At night. We kept talking. I said, now tell me again. But she said, the eyes look like gold amber. I said, yes, that's the way John and Daniel described them, like gold. I said, how big were the wings? She said, oh, they were big. She said, there were eyes everywhere. Now, this girl had never had any teaching on the living creature. She didn't even know what she was saying. I said, who else have you told? She said, nobody. I said, you haven't told anybody? <laughs> Seven hours. I got awakened. Because I knew the more I asked her, the more she'd tell. Now, how high was it? How close was it to you? Where was it in your backyard? I said, have you seen it again? She said, no, I go out every night hoping it's going to come back. <laughs> God is so powerful. The yes. presence, his presence is so powerful. Yes. If he decided to turn on all the electricity, yes. would be then left us. Yes. <laughs> if he decided to talk to every one of us with an audible voice every day, we wouldn't last long. Yes. Because of the magnitude of the power of his voice would yes. almost destroy. Yes. Yes. That's why he doesn't speak in an audible voice. He speaks in our spirit. Yes. Yeah. But when he does speak, so I've asked several people, what did his voice sound like? Because I heard his audible voice. Yes. Yes. And when I tell you, I've never heard love expressed mm. the way I heard it in his voice. It melted me for three days. I couldn't yes. talk to anyone for three days. Wow. Yes, yes. Because of the sound of his voice. When he spoke to me this one morning, it was a Sunday morning, I knew that when he spoke to me that everything in my life was going to be ordained to God in one moment. Didn't need any convincing. Didn't need another sermon. Didn't need another read another chapter in the Bible. I knew that my steps were ordered forever Amen. because of the sound of the Bible. Somebody sings and he speaks in the sound of his voice and the birds stop their singing. Yes. Yes. Now the, equate that. Think about yes. it. He ordains them to sing in certain times of the year. The sound of his voice went deep, 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 deep into my soul and my spirit. And it was like a voice of love. I don't know how. I've seen a few love stories in my life. But they really have to work on the character of the person doing the parts for it to really orchestrate what that writer is saying in that movie. Yes. It sounded like a thousand waters. 
it just multiplied itself. And I, it pulled me right up out of the bed. I said, what did you say? I knew what he said, but I wanted him to say something else. I didn't care what he said. He could have scolded me, could have corrected me. So he waited a few weeks and he woke me up again one morning and he spoke to me again. And he spoke to me from the King James Version. Go see thy mother. That's how he spoke to me. He always said thou and thee to me when he spoke to me. Because I read the King James Version. And he said, when you go, he instructed me, it was about three sentences of what to say to her. Because my mother was going to a great valley at that time. And he told me what to say to her and what not to say to her and to listen to her. And it was the last time I heard my mother speak to me. She died by the following week. It was Palm Sunday. She was gone the fall. She died. He honored her by taking her on Good Friday and burying her on Passover Monday. I mean, it was just honor. Hallelujah. She died, and my sister saw her die, grabbed her hands, and called her back to life. Because my mother had a vision. If she hadn't come back to life, she wouldn't have made it to heaven. Because the vision told her something that she had not done before she died. And my sister was standing there and grabbed her hands and commanded life to come back into her. And my mother said to the Lord, what did that vision mean? And the Lord told her, and then she told my sister, and my sister didn't tell me until 30 years later. I'm talking to you about the dynamics of God. The greatness of God, the wonder. The beauty, the glory. It will get into your spirit to where when you wake up in the morning, you're carried away because he's got your heart. And he wants to tell you more of what's in his heart. And it's so fascinating. And there's so much wonder in it. And beauty and mystery in it. And hidden manner in it. I remember he said to me, I told you, he said to me, the gold is coming, the golden coming. How many remember I said that? He said seven times, the gold is coming, the gold is coming recently. And so I'm asking the Lord about this trip yesterday morning. I said, Lord, do you want it in the spring or do you want it now? And I got the Bible and I prayed. And I'm not a person that's always looking, you know. For God to give me assurance. But I said, I think I'm going to open the Bible. And I'm going to see what he says about this trip. And all of a sudden, my eyes fell on the gold in the scripture. And I thought, oh my goodness. Now this is another version. I had the New King James Version in my house. But it's in the 13th chapter of Isaiah and it's the curse against the nations that it's about to come. But right in the middle of the chapter, I'm just going to tell you what it says without reading it. He said, when this happened, he's going to make man finer than the fine gold. It's the finer than the fine gold that there is. In other words, he's going to get his people ready in a measure of the spirit and the power of God that when trouble comes, it's not going to bother us. Amen. He said, I'm going to make man finer than the fine gold of Ophar. That's the finest gold there is. David had, Solomon had a lot of it. When I read the life of Solomon, his, weird, his yearly wages was 25 tons of gold. You know how much an ounce is worth? 25 tons. You know how many ounces is in a metric ton? 25 tons was what he had to work with every year. He had gold on everything. And God wants to put his presence on us yes. in gold. Yes, yes. It says, more valuable than gold, yea, much fine gold. Yes. Amen. 
And you say, well, Sister Ruth, what, what are you trying to say to us? I'm trying to tell you there's more to God than what we're seeing. Amen. There's more to God than we're understanding. There's more to God than we're moving in or there's some things we wouldn't do. And I'm not talking about bad things. I'm talking about we change our schedule. We change our mind about some things. How we do it, where we go, who we associate with, what we're familiar with, what we're involved in. We, we would just, that wouldn't be a part of our lives. He'd be recognized in everything and honored in everything. Does anybody know what I'm saying? Yes. Because yes. he wants to come very close. Yes. Very close. For the last, yesterday, I was very aware, all evening and again, there was somebody else in my kitchen, and I needed to get up and take care of them. I'm sitting in a chair talking to God. This has happened to me a half a dozen times recently. There's somebody else in the house with me. Now, I'm not trying to talk foolish or talk some strange doctrine to you. He says, I'm a friend that will stick closer than a brother. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes Jesus. Amen. And you can tell him anything, and he won't tell other people. He's not a tattletale. He's not a tattletale. Isn't right. that wonderful? He'll only, he will only tell a little bit about you if he's trying to get your attention. Yeah. And he usually tells somebody you don't want him to tell. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. He says, come close. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Read the 13th chapter. When it says it's going to come. There's going to be a dashing against one another. He says, How are ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. The noise of the multitude shall be like a great people are like nations gathered together against one another. There's a shaking right now in mid-Europe. France, I told you, Switzerland, I think Austria. It's gone over into other countries because there's an uprising in France. Listen to this. And the prime minister was at a concert with all the fires going on. The wreckage, the cars burning, the turmoil in the city. He was gone to a concert with Elton John. Just put two and two together. Remember the word the Lord said to the, the angel said to the man recently that France wants another Napoleon Bonaparte. You got to know what God is saying. He said that Greece wants another Alexander the Great. Italy wants another Nero. And Spain wants another Queen Isabella. Do you know what those those things mean? I have two of them, three of them. They were always a homosexual. Yeah. In the time of Queen Isabella, they were against the Jews, killing them all, getting rid of them. The angel said to the pastor of Rick Joyner's ministry, visited him for 30 minutes and told him, these things, he says, there's going to be a great earthquake in India, a devastating earthquake. The Lord was going to take Biden, and Kamala Harris was going to be the president. And what is the lady's name from Boston? She was going to be her assistant to help her. She has a short hair, dude. You know who she is. She ran for the presidency. What's her name? Pocahontas. <laughs> what is her name? Elizabeth, Elizabeth yes. Yeah. Warren. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> now, Elizabeth Warren doesn't like Camilla Paris right now. We'll just uh, wait and see what God does. Now, I'm not trying to snow you with anything. I'm telling you, look for the signs. Yeah. Yeah. More visitations from the Lord. Yeah. More reading of the word. More gathering unto the Lord. And spend more time with him. Not too much. Um, I had a vision of, of Chris and um, Nick a few days ago. It's a good vision. It's not a bad vision, so I'm telling you. But I thought they have in the past have helped me. And I thought, well, maybe I can call on one of them to help me again. Not without pay. 
And I saw both of them, and they had so much in their hands, they were trying to juggle it, they couldn't help it. Good things. Things that they had to do. But what I want to say to you, find the things that are important, not the things that you think. That, you know, if we think everything is in order, we're going to be okay. Now find out the things that are important. You have three doors to your mouth when you speak. Is it good? Is it necessary? And will it make a difference Amen. when you speak it? Amen. Remember that. Is it good? Is it necessary? Or will it make a difference when we speak? And there'd be a whole lot less conversation going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I share what I was seeing this yes. morning? 